welcome. This world is sustained by selfless sacrifice. The, this is the beginning of immortality for soul when it gives without ever thinking of reward. The love that we receive, the divine love, I'm speaking of divine love, from this, from the Holy Spirit or the Var, what we call the Varden and Vardenkar, is this pure, this light and sound, the audible life stream. And when we go into contemplation, when we do our spiritual exercises, we go into contemplation, we receive this Varden. There's two streams. There's the returning wave and there's the descending wave, the wave that sustains. And so when we receive this audible life stream, which is the Holy Spirit, we at some point we must give it back in acts of loving kindness and in acts as a channel. And the more we unfold spiritually, the more conscious we become. And the purity, the purity of our expression becomes more and more of this light and sound, this Varden. As soul, which is our true self, which has a 360 degree viewpoint, we're not talking about the astral body, we're talking about soul. Soul is eternal. It's identical in substance to the hue ray or God, which dwells in the ocean of love and mercy. Now, this being that we refer to as the hue ray, simply because of lack of, of a term or name terminology, um, there's really nothing that can be said about its its um inside of it, the internal part of it. Nothing can be said about, nothing can be thought about it. This is the same with soul. Now the external, or the outer, if you can call it that, we have this love, wisdom, power, and freedom. We have the, the attributes, or the, the expressions, the many expressions and so we have the in-breath, and we have the out-exhale, the outer breath, out-breath. And the in-breath, we take in this Varden stream, which we ironically are as soul. See, the eternal part of ourselves is not the astral body. It's not obviously not the physical body or the mental body or the causal body. These are all sheaths. These are all here to allow us to interface or to interact with the coarse vibrations of, of these lower worlds, the lower planes. Now there's a God Worlds chart. If you're watching a video, you might be looking at it now, hopefully. But it's also found on Vardenkar.com, V-A-R-D-A-N-K-A-R.com. And you can see there's a dividing line between the lower worlds and the pure positive God worlds. Soul dwells in these pure positive God worlds, but soul can get trapped in its attention in the lower world, in these lower bodies. And so the only method, the most direct method, I should say, because there are many paths back to God, but Vardenkar is the most direct, 
and it hasn't always been called Vardenkar. It's had many different names, including Ekenkar and, and many others throughout the ages. But Vardenkar is the path of total awareness. It's the path of out-of-body soul projection. And so what we find is that the natural state of soul is in the God worlds, and yet we are capable of maintaining our lower bodies and using those lower bodies as vehicles for for the Varden and for soul and for and for God or the Hugh Ray. Now this might sound a little convoluted, but it's actually very simple when it's actually being done, but it's difficult to reach that point. Often we have to forget about ourselves, and this is where the selflessness comes in. When a person is thinking about themselves and their immediate family, and they tend to become introverted. Now there's a negative power which desires us to stay in this negative state of being, having our attention fixated upon the, these lower bodies, and it does this through the five passions of lust, anger, greed, attachment, and vanity, which are very powerful um, distractions, basically. And it also does this through karma and reincarnation. And so, in the lower self, we the little what's called the little self, we have the little self, and then we have the greater self, which is soul, the eternal self. The God self. And all, all beings are like this. They simply, many of them have not unfolded into this awareness. But all souls will return inevitably to the Godhead. Where they will become conscious co-workers with the Hurei. This is soul's birthright, it's soul's destiny. But the time that it takes to do this, since soul is beyond time, matter, energy, and space, but the number of reincarnations or incarnations that occur are generally in, in the millions. And in the Hure's great compassion and love and mercy for soul, it has given soul a way of moving into its heart, the ocean of love and mercy, and basically graduating, becoming a conscious co-worker. And this has to be done through consciousness. All the good deeds in the world will only bring one good karma. All the bad deeds in the world will bring one bad karma or, ne or negative karma. <clears throat> now this is all automatic. There's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's been a system put in place, and we this is where we have all the, these angels and lords of karma and various spiritual workers and and mystery school teachers who some of some of them hold themselves up as masters. But there are higher ones because there's a there's a teacher or guru or or path or religion for every, every state of consciousness. Every soul is in the developmental state of unfoldment. Now, when we do this unfoldment through actions. And working the working out of karma and the and the these lifetime after lifetime after lifetimes in many many different situations, ranging from di very very difficult and hard to to much more joyous and easy, when we work out this program through that, it's a very very tedious slow process because what we're really after what soul is really after is returning back to the Godhead. And this can't be done through actions. It can't be done through feelings 
emotions. It can't be done through thoughts. So often the individual will frantically read books and think and analyze and try to feel and expand their their heart center, their love, and do physical actions and try to do good work, such as feeding homeless people or helping children or educating people or do whatever it is that they're doing in an attempt to, to give back to God. And what the individual finds generally is that this will certainly, in most cases, bring good karma. But that's about it. It won't end the cycle of reincarnation and it won't unfold the soul significantly in consciousness generally because it's all about this consciousness and so soul has to move out of its body into these expanded states of awareness thus Paul Twitchell or Paul G called it um, the path of total awareness now this path of total awareness or this path of of um you can call it soul travel, you can call it Tuza travel, you can call it uh, out-of-body projection or soul projection. I usually prefer to call it um, soul projection. And all of these terms are just ways of trying to explain um, that soul is a unit of awareness with a 360-degree viewpoint, which is not hindered by time and space, matter or energy. So soul can place its attention, and soul can move, and, and when I say move, it's it's moving isn't really the correct um, term for it, but soul can place its attention on any one of these various planes. Now these planes exist simultaneously, and each one is correspondingly higher in vibration. Now what the true God-seeker is interested in is reaching at minimum the soul plane which is the first of the pure positive god worlds until then there's a dichotomy we have below the soul plane we have the, the the great void which is a great area of darkness which is often called cosmic consciousness um and there are many states of different different states of cosmic consciousness but this would be the the highest state of cosmic consciousness now, cosmic consciousness has nothing to do with God realization. It's a state of, of alignment with the universe, but it's of a lower nature, lower vibratory rate. And as we move down through this void into the etheric plane, and soul takes on the etheric body or this sheath, so that it, it's a very thin sheath, we begin to experience this fragmentation and we begin to go, we go into, we descend into the lower worlds where there's a dichotomy. We have good and evil. We have opposites. We have mountains and valleys. We have death and life. We have all these opposites. And there has to be an opposite for every quality when we reach the lower worlds. Everything has an opposite. Every Everything. It's this balance of the, the three powers, the positive, negative, and neutral forces are always in balance. And if they're not in balance, then we usually have um, some kind of a explosive event or something happens. And this is just the natural cycles that occur in the lower worlds for the education of, of souls. And so soul's only hope, if it wishes to transcend all of this in a, in, a, um, in a single lifetime, which is possible, is to find the perfect master, a master who has already established himself in the pure positive God worlds in the, in the twelfth plane or above, And who can bring that soul into these these worlds through through the process of of bilocation or the process of out of body travel? 
and the individual has to work at this. This is a, um, when I say work, or you could say play if you want to, but it's really um, going through this play of Maya in order to find truth, and it requires, like any difficult task, such as becoming a, a great piano pianist or um, musician or dancer or, or painter, or, or, or writer, it requires uh, discipline and, and, and some work and some time involved in it. Now, we don't have to meditate. We don't meditate in Varankar. We do contemplation or spiritual exercises. But we don't have to um, do these exercises for hours and hours and hours a day. Um, we can still have a life. There's still balance. We don't have to quit our job. We don't have to get divorced. We don't have to move out in the middle of a mountain range and live in a mud hut. Um, we can do this because, you know, time is an illusion. But if the individual thinks that they're going to get anywhere without putting any effort in, everything in this world has to be paid for. It's just the nature, the, na the nature of these lower worlds. Now, you might be wondering why would soul have to go through millions upon millions of incarnations? You know, why is it so hard? Or, or you might be very skeptical. Um, since some of the books on near-death experiences, they talk about hundreds of incarnations. Well, there's a curtain of forgetfulness that comes about. Also, these lower bodies are, they all have a lifespan, whether it's the physical, the astral, the causal, the mental. Now, they, some of the bodies are quite, have a tremendous longevity, but eventually they, they die, they translate. So it's an act of mercy that we don't remember. Most of us don't remember these millions upon millions of lifetimes or at least hundreds of thousands, generally, it's, it's in the millions, before a soul is ready to, um, to leave. But that's not a factor. It's really when a soul has been chosen by God, then the soul will have the eyes to see and the ears to hear truth, and they will understand the teachings of, of Vardhankar, the teachings of by location or total awareness and this method of, of leaving the body and traveling into these various planes with the aid of, of the spiritual travelers. Now these spiritual travelers are many and um, we've got uh, quite a few of them. There's Rebbe is comes to mind immediately. He's the torchbearer of Vardenkar. And he's over 550 years old in the same body. He's a was a Tibetan Lama. And Ziyabo Sakabi, who's even older. Um, Rebazar does looks like he's in his 30s or early 40s, 30s. And uh, same with Yabo, in perfect health. Um, now they just. For, because of their spiritual mission, they decided they immortalize their body. So they they're not eventually their body will die. Of course, everything in the physical has a cycle. But because of their spiritual mission, they chose to remain longer than than what a, nor, a normal human lifespan would be. But that's not the case of all Varden masters. Um, Paul G translated relatively early uh, he was poisoned but I'm not going to go into all of that but there have been many Varden masters that have been killed or died of diseases M many different situations um, Sri Paul Twitchell talks about that about the masters in the um, the spiritual notebook which is which I highly recommend I recommend all of, all of Paul's books. So, although the terminology has changed, 
um, under under Vardenkar. Because the old Ekankar, well, the old Ekankar under Palji was the true path. Palji was a, a Varden master. He was a living Varden master of his time, but he, at that time it was known as Ekankar. We're talking about 1965 to 1971 upon his translation. But after that, there was no living master that was an actual 12th initiate. And um, Darwin had taken over. Paul G. didn't appoint Darwin. He just made a list of, of five individuals from what I've heard. But Darwin did his best, but he, he was only in for about three years, I believe. You're not going to reach your 12th initiation in three years. But he did, I believe, reach his fifth which is which is very good, but it's not a fifth initiate doesn't make a twelfth. And so Darwin couldn't really accept the rod of power. And so the teachings went underground under Rebazar. So, so some of you this is probably totally irrelevant and boring. So there's always been a path with whatever the name, whatever the country, whatever the masters have had many, many different races and skin colors and origins, ethnic origins. They spoke many different languages. And this has been going on forever, not just on Earth, but other planets. And planets go through cycles and then they're destroyed. And even the physical universe is destroyed and then it comes back. Um, this is a long cycles. The Varden Vidya talks about this it's really um tremendous periods of time go by and and so goes through these cycles of the um these yugas which are points of time the the golden age um the silver age the copper age and and the iron age which we're in the beginning of the iron age now and in each age gets progressively more negative and less less spirit and more negative thus you know we see things that are happening now that um that are you know harsh they you know difficult and and you could say negative and this is as the cow swings the cow has two sides to it the cow is the negative power its job is to hold us in the lower worlds for as long as possible. And soul's job is to escape. And this can only be done through consciousness. Through the expansion of consciousness. Through the total awareness. Through a series of spiritual exercises. Which are known only to the followers of, of Vardenkar. And so this these spiritual exercises are really um, the key. Now, there's more, more to it than this, and I'm oversimplifying it simply because Vardenkar is a is a um, is a is a path. It's not something that you're going to learn in an hour. Uh, it takes tremendous patience and perseverance. But some of you have already had experiences. And um, you don't need to be in Vardenkar to have experiences. Some of you have been in, in Vardenkar under different names in past lives. And you might be finding the path again. To having an opportunity to, to look into it or, or, or reject it. These are all tests. Those who aren't ready simply aren't ready. And that doesn't make them bad or anything. Um, the Hure or God doesn't really, in a way it doesn't care because it knows its soul will eventually return to it. And, and it's beyond time and space. And it's set up a system which is essentially perfect, although it certainly doesn't appear perfect, where souls are trained so that they can become conscious co-workers with it. And when that occurs, it occurs. You know, whether it takes a billion years or a hundred million years or or five seconds, 
um, inevitably so will return to God and become a useful spiritual citizen, a conscious co-worker, conscious co-creator with the hue ray. That's the nature of soul. Soul is basically, we're basically gods among other gods. Each, each soul is a light unto itself and is identical in substance to the Varden and to the Hure. It's basically a miniaturized version of God or the Hure. Now, the danger here in saying that, <laughs> I, I, you know, makes me cringe, is that those who are in the lower states, such as the mental plane, the causal plane, like they talk about the universal mind power, which is the mental plane, um, those that are in the lower states will think that that means that the universal mind power is God. You see. So we get into this problem of the individualized ego or the, the lower vibrations of of the negative polarity. And so the person becomes vain. They become, they become delusional. And that's the nature of the lower world is illusion. And so it's not, we don't lose our individuality when we go into these higher pure positive God worlds. Far from it, we become far greater, more exp most tremendous freedom, love, wisdom, power, and freedom. The problem is, is when the individual believes they've already made it into these higher planes, when in fact they're scarcely reached the astral plane or they've scarcely reached the mental plane. And this is so common that I'll, I'll be speaking about these things and people will, will assume that, oh yeah, I've been there and done it. We were talking to a lady who was a psychic um, a few years back and we were talking a little bit about what we did and she said, oh yeah, you know, I, I visit the higher worlds. I visit God all the time. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, let's do it all the time. I know exactly what you're talking about. And then she started to describe um, some experience she had. And it was very clear that this was not the God worlds, but these she was talking about the lower worlds. But in her mind... Um, this is what we're talking about, and this is what she believed, and she wasn't going to entertain any ideas that we had anything to offer her that she didn't already know, that she didn't already experience. And these people just don't have the ears to hear or the eyes to see. And, there's, and it's, it's fine, it's okay. But there are some of you that know that something is missing. And you long to return. You become like the hound of heaven. You know, you pine for, for God. Now, when I say God, what I'm really talking about is to actually see the face of God, to enter into the ocean of love and mercy, or at, at minimum the tenth plane, the Anami Lok. To be in that place where God exists and to partake, it's very, it's really impossible to describe it. You know, we can call it God realization, um, which is the term that we use in Vardenkar. God realization begins on the 10th plane or the Anami Lok, and then it continues through the 11th and 12th. Where, where exists the ocean of love and mercy, where dwells the Hure, or God. And we can actually see the face of God. Now, it's not a human face, obviously. Um, we can touch the, the hem of God's robe. And, it's, and I'm not doing, I'm giving metaphors here. There's no robe. Um, it's really indescribable, and it has to be experienced. And this is one of the big goals of Vardenkar, well, we have self-realization, which is on the soul plane. This is the first 
true, pure, positive God world, the soul plane, or the Atma Lok, the fifth region. And then we move on through the various planes, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth. And we start to move into this God realization state. And then below this, we're really not that interested in it. We have the lower planes. Now on these, every plane has a golden wisdom temple where we may go and study in the dream state and during contemplation other times. And each golden wisdom temple has a master um, who's in charge of it. And so these are like way stations where we can learn. And on the physical, we have um, Fubi Quants, who teaches. Um, and we also have um, Yabo Sakabi. Who has a, a different wisdom temple. And then we move into the astral. The astral plane. And we have. Gopal Das. At the t in the temple of Ascalaposis. Now I can, I'm. For some reason, it's the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember the names of the um, wisdom temples for um, for Yamal Sakami. I, sh I should know this. <laughs> um, I'm sure I'll remember it after I'm done giving the talk. <laughs> um, I think it's the Kat Katsapari Monastery, um, but I can't remember if that's Fubi or... or um, Fubi or um, Yabo Sakabi, who teaches there. But we can visit these golden wisdom temples. And on each wisdom temple, there's a, the, a volume of the Shariaki Hure. And we can study these golden words. There's no book that's higher than this. And so soul gets this education through these various wisdom temples. And the idea is to prepare soul to go to the next plane above. And the process takes time. But the master, the living Varden master or one of the other masters, can take soul into any plane that soul has earned, regardless of, of their initiation or how long they've been in. But seldom will they do this in a way that would disrupt the person. You know, if somebody were to be suddenly thrust into the into the anami log on the tenth plane, it might be um, they might not even probably wouldn't even recognize it. They wouldn't even realize what had happened, or it would be too much for them. So the masters are careful. But this is um. This is the path of Vardhankar. It's always existed under these various names. And it really makes sense if you if you um, think about it, that everything is consciousness and vibration. That you can do physical actions, you can read, you can you can do good works, you can try to be good and nice and kind and all of these things, and those are all fine. But it's common sense, to me anyway, probably not to a lot of people, that ultimately it's going to be your state of consciousness and not how many brownie points you you think you've acquired or how many actions. It's sort of like an actor on a stage. You know, we're like these actors and we're playing a role. But ultimately that's not what it's about. It's about, it's about this consciousness. It's about our attention and being able to shift it. So if we want to see the face of God, we can't expect God in its high vibration, its high, high, lofty vibration to descend into the human state. This is simply not the way it works. Um, 
although many religions try to make it sound like this is this is the way it works but in reality we end up having our our for lack of better terms head in heaven and our feet on earth so we're able to bilocate i, I don't really like that term in this case because there's no location in the higher worlds there's no time and space or matter or energy but we're able to to dwell that's a be much better word we're able to dwell in these higher planes while simultaneously carrying on in the lower bodies and being able to function so we can write we can talk we can interact and yet we're connected consciously with these higher pure positive god worlds so our consciousness is in heaven but our feet are on earth and this is the purpose really of these lower bodies you know once soul has graduated and and um, worked out its karma um, and learn to to move and expand its awareness into these higher planes and, and gone through this this education and the initiations as it as it does then it's able to expand out and become this channel this conscious channel for the god power and for the master to carry on the universal work and each soul has its own spiritual mission or missions and each soul has been trained and so we have many many different unique individual souls who have different specialties and it's really a wonderful thing to watch a soul graduate reach that point where it's now established itself in a higher plane particularly the Anami Lokan above and then able to carry on here as a pure open vehicle or channel for the Varden, for this pure positive energy. Pure positive, I guess energy is not even the right word. It's, it's, this, it's the voice of God. It's the audible life stream. It's life itself. Now the Cal power, on the other hand, the negative power, which dominates the lower worlds, unfortunately, well not unfortunately, but it dominates the lower worlds, it has two sides to it, it has two faces. It has the positive face and the negative face. And the positive, the positive face is, we mentioned, you know, fe feeding children and clothing children and helping helping older people and feeding homeless people and being kind and loving and, and producing beautiful works of art and all of these things. Not, there's nothing wrong with this. This is part of life. But also, it, it also concludes morality and, and, and very stringent um, religion and, meta, you know, metaphysics and the mind sciences and all of this is all part of this negative system, the cow. Um, then on the other side, the other face of the cow, the negative face of the cow, we have what we witness, things like war, hate, anger, Deceit, jealousy, rage, destruction, death, etc., etc., famine. Um, this is the other side of the cow. And soul is constantly flipping back and forth, lifetime after lifetime, experiencing many, many different things on this wheel of, of 84. So the morality of the cow and this the positive face of the cow is really um very deceiving and souls the cow is a master of maya or illusion the cow being the negative power is a master of maya or illusion and so soul is fooled and absorbed into these various things for, for example it may go into the astral plane and experience a let's say the mid astral because there are many parts of the astral plane it goes into the mid astral it might see an angel it might have an experience with a very bright light and see now it's enamored 
and it may falsely believe that it's reached this high, high heaven. And so now, so we may think that this is it. I've seen the face of God. I've seen heaven. There's nowhere else to go. This is this is where I'm going. Or this is where I am. Or this is where I'm going to go after I translate or die. And this is wonderful. And and this is the end of the um, journey, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it, it never is. It's always this is, is the, the mid-astral. Or maybe it's the high astral. Or maybe it's the causal or the mental even. The mental plane. So as we go higher on these planes, there's less and less matter and more and more of the Varden or the, the the Holy Spirit. And so there's great light in some of these planes, and this can be very deceiving. But the thing to remember is that each plane has its own vibration, its own consciousness and vibration. We're dealing with vibration, we're dealing with sound, light and sound. And so if you're in the high astral, for example, you're at that particular frequency, that particular uh, part of the, of the consciousness and the sound, and that's limited because it's in the lower world. It's limited. You know, you're still in that dichotomy. You're still in matter, energy, time, and space, but there's less matter and there's more spirit. So it gives this illusion of, of, of ecstasy and all of these things and and so often falsely concludes that it's it's reached the ultimate and there's nowhere there's no further to go there's no need to to move any further than this and this has been a, a this is a tremendous trap that souls have and they often stay in these lower states which are can be quite pleasant for for quite long periods of time you know until they finally begin to get sick of it and they go back and begin to study in the Golden Wisdom Temples. And they begin to work and move towards... Or they they go into the path of Vardenkar and realize that this is only the astral plane. This is only the mental plane. So, so if you understand this, also soul... I've said many of this in my other talks. Soul is not um, the astral body. Many people confuse soul for the astral body. It's very easy to do that. The astral body is much finer. It's, it can sparkle like millions of, of um, diamonds or millions of stars. It's the, it, some people call it the light body. And so people view the astral body and they say, Wow, I, I saw myself as soul. But the astral body actually is finite. It has a lifespan. It has a finite lifespan. It's very long, and it still has a finite lifespan. But most of the time, souls will incarnate back on Earth. Um, and they'll do this millions of times. And they'll go through these endless cycles of reincarnation. Well, I don't, they're not really endless, but they appear endless. And the, this is the Wheel of 84, and I've talked about all of this. And I apologize for, for um, reiterating a lot of the points that I've made in past videos. Um... As Paul G used to say, I never repeat myself, I never repeat myself, I never repeat myself. Sometimes repetition is, is good. These principles of Vardenkar are really not taught. Um, or if they are taught, they're incomplete. Now, I will say one last, a uh, couple of last things to, to, in closing, because I know this is getting a little long. A master can only take you as high as as he has achieved. So if the master has, has only reached the mental plane and you follow him, he will only be able to take you that far at most. If he's a causal master, if he's reached the causal plane, he'll be only take you to the causal plane at most. So the Varden masters have gone at least to the 12th plane in order to become a living Varden master. Um, or Varden Master, you have to be at least at the 12th plane. Many of them have gone beyond that into the 14th plane and above. So choosing a master to follow, in a way, you're choosing the highest that you'll be able to reach under his instruction, under his tutelage. That's something that most people don't understand. 
Now, all masters or most many masters will tell you that they're the highest, that they've reached the ultimate. Some of them won't call themselves masters. They'll have, they'll have other terms for it. But so we could, you know, say guru, teacher, whatever you want to call, or whatever the individual's calling himself. He's basically saying, I can teach you something about consciousness, or I can teach you something about life or truth. Now, there's this phenomena with uh, some people are really obsessed with aliens and alien technology and alien DNA and. And um, they think that aliens are the highest state of consciousness. It's kind of amusing. Uh, yes, of course, they exist. Um, and yes, some of them are more advanced, um, much more advanced than than the Earth world, such as Palladians. Um, I'm not going to go into this too much, so don't worry. Um, and some of them are actually kind of dark. But the these these aliens are really uh, just beings that exist in different bodies, and so they're not they should not be made into gods. Most of them are not that high in consciousness relative to to a Varden master. They're they're really not at all. Now there are Varden masters on other planets, but they're few and far between. As far as um, you know, you're unlikely to have a Varden master come down in a, you know, saucer <laughs> and uh, teach you. Um, so there seems to be that, I guess I should branch off a little bit, people tend to worship something and make it into their god, whether it's aliens or I'm a starseed, I want to return to my home planet, or I want to make a lot of money in my business, or I want to... Uh, be the, the most kind, loving person on earth, or as close to that as possible. I'm going to feed people and clothe people and teach people and, and do good works. And, and that they tend to turn whatever it is that they value most into their God. And of course, they have a right to do this. Now, the, the thing is, if you truly love God, which few do, I'm talking about divine love, if you truly love God, then you're going to want to reach God and be with God. You know, I've given this analogy before, but if a man truly loves a woman, and let's say she doesn't live in his proximity, she lives a thousand miles away, he's going to want to be in her presence. And he will move heaven and earth in order to do that. You see. But if he doesn't love her, then he'll, he may pay lip service to their relationship. But he's not actually with her. You know, maybe he text messages or, or <laughs> um, whatever. But he's not, or calls her on the phone. But he, Now, there are situations where somebody might have to be away from their spouse or their loved one for a certain period of time. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying as, a, as an analogy with God, the true hound of heaven, the God seeker, the true God seeker, the true devotee to the master, desires to be with God, to, to be in that state, and will not rest until that happens. They're generally restless souls who, who have been around the block enough and have been given a tremendous gift of understanding that they're not home, that this is not their home, and that they won't settle for anything less than seeing the face of God. And these are rare individuals. Perhaps you're one of them. Perhaps you're not one of them. <laughs> um, this can be kindled to a degree, as the so often we are not aware of soul's true desires, because they've been covered up by all these bodies, these lower bodies, and the karma, and the fear, and all the things. These past lives leave all kinds of engrams, and images, and picture files, and, and all this stuff that kind of muddies the water. There are many advanced souls who aren't aware that they're advanced. So, it's very important not to judge yourself, or condemn yourself. Very important that you be neutral about your own self, about your own value to God. 
and not judge yourself as being inferior or being because you can't judge a soul based upon outer appearances and outer conditions you simply can't accurately although that's what this world teaches in a kali yuga like we have now everything is turned upside down as paul used to say something like to the effect that um you know gestures are turned into kings and kings are turned are, are made fun of and turned into gestures you know clowns become kings and kings become clowns people people spit on those who give truth and they praise those who who lie and give and give um, mistruths so the world is kind of a kali yuga things turn upside down and um and you can see that with the masses. You know, the people that make the most money are the people that are probably contributing the least um, or actually hurting hurting a lot of people. Um, I'm not, as a general rule, I'm not saying all the time. There's, no, there's nothing that's, that's 100%. Well, not, that's not completely true, but there are, there are some things that are 100%. One is that soul exists because God loves it the law of love another one is that soul is eternal so there are some principles that are that are universal so regardless of what path you choose Vardhankar is not the only path back to God but it is the most direct is the fastest because you're dealing with vibration and consciousness and you're deal and you're transcending these lower planes into the pure positive God worlds, which is what ultimately has to be done. There's really no way to avoid that process. You know, I'd like to say that <laughs> you know, everybody wants a microwave um, dinner. They they want something fast and easy. You know, like you chant a certain word and boom, you know, you're done. But um, it doesn't work that way, generally. <laughs> it's a lot of, of, it's a process that takes place. And so very few people have the humility and the desire for God. It takes tremendous humility, that's another thing. You have to be willing to admit that everything you've learned so far has amounted to basically nothing. All the religious teachings, all the metaphysical teachings you've studied, all of this, it's helped you to a degree, but it's also hindered you. And that's something that's a hard pill to swallow for some people because of pride and vanity and ego. They like to think that they have this tremendous asset of, of wisdom and knowledge that they've acquired through the reading of books and various experiences they've had. But there comes a point where you realize that you know very little or nothing. And you have to empty your vessel. And this is the thing. If you have a gallon bucket of water and it's filled and you come to the master and you say, fill my consciousness with the light of God, the light and sound of God, and your bucket is already filled with stagnant water, the master cannot pour the, the new consciousness into your bucket, into your, into your beingness if you're filled with other things. So we have to empty ourselves and be very humble before God and, and ask for help. And when determining whether Vardenkar is right for you or whatever path is right for you, it's best to go inwardly. It's actually really the only thing to do if you're smart. I mean, if you're, if you're truly a God seeker, you go inwardly and you ask God for help. And however long it takes and however many times you have to ask, whether you get the answer in one day or four days or a week or two weeks or a month or six months, it really is a matter of being sincere. God or the Hure knows what's in everyone's heart. There's no hiding. There's no lying. We can lie to ourselves, but we can't lie to God. God sees through us. So sincerity is very important. Sincerity and humility 
understanding that although we are gods among other gods, we are not the whole. We are a part of the whole. We're a drop from the ocean of love and mercy. But we come back to that entire ocean, which is gone, the Hure, humbly, and we ask for its help. And it will help us the whole through through the Holy Spirit or the Varden, it will help us to find our way back to it. It can't not help us. But we have to be totally sincere and we have to be willing to go through the trials and testing. Because it won't be easy. It will be the most difficult thing we've ever done in our lives. And if you're not if we're not willing to do that, if you're not willing to do that, then um then you'll just make a certain amount of progress and stop, which is what most people do. So it's really a matter of desire, but the, the good news is that each step of the way, as you unfold, you're unfolding, and that's exciting. So it's not like you get nothing, 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 year after year after year, and then one day, 20 years later, or 30 years later, you get God realization. It's not like that um, necessarily, but it's you go through these various stages where you go to the Golden Wisdom Temples, you have experiences with the light and sound. You may even visit some of these higher planes long, long before you become a master. This is very actually common. Whether you recognize that or not is another story. But the masters can take a chila into, into whatever plane that chila has earned, that student has earned. And so, because these planes exist simultaneously, and because we are soul, the true Varden initiate always dwells in the pure positive God worlds. We must never forget that God is here and now. At the same time, we have to remember that the Cal and the negative, the universal mind power is not God. It's it's a lower manifestation. It's it's the it's the lower worlds, and that's where the problem comes when we confuse the cow and the Brahm, the, the universal mind power. We confuse that with God, and then we settle for for karma and reincarnation. We settle for the lower states. Well, that's I've said enough. Um, that's all I have to say for this talk. Baraka Bashad, may the blessings be.